I don't know if you can see it, but see this little, I got this thing going on back here with my hair. Oh, there it is. See right here? I went to Home Depot and the grocery store like this. Hey Booktube, it's Kim at Middle of the Book March and today is another chatty video. Last week I did the best books because of Booktube and today it's the worst books because of Booktube. Yes, I blame Booktube for this. You know, there's nothing wrong with talking about bad books or books you didn't like or books you think are bad. You, you can't like every book and not every book is going to work and not every book is well written. So there you go. It's just the truth. And I know there are a lot of booktubers or readers or creators who don't like to criticize a book. But one of the things about being a reader is you strengthen your critical thinking skills and you strengthen your discernment when it comes to bad writing versus really bad poor writing versus excellent writing versus a book that's fine. So you get to discern that. And why not give a re an honest review of a book? So, since I started watching Booktube in 2018 and creating videos in 2019, these are the books that have been the worst for me. I did not include DNFs. These are all books that I completed, finished. I read the entire book. The, the DNFs are a different story, and I, I, I don't think I'm even going to bother with a video like that, because a lot of the DNFs that I have, I DNFed very early, and there's really no point. I'm not going to review a book that I DNF to 10%. If the only way I would review a DNF book is if I if I DNF'd it past 50% or so. And I've had a few of those. Okay, so let me tell you what my worst books were in the last five years of BookTube. And I have an honorable mention. My first year of watching BookTube was 2018. And the worst book that I read that year was Problems by Jade Sharma. And I am going to call out, no, you know what? I'm not going to call out a booktuber. <laughs> I don't want to do that. I don't want to embarrass anybody. But I read this based on a booktuber's recommendation, a very well-known booktuber who I really enjoy watching. And we don't have the same taste very often, but I really love their style and their commentary and their discussions. So I picked up this very short book and it was awful it was awful it was the story of a young woman in new york city who just ha was living such an awful dirty uh depraved filthy gross insecure unstable unsafe life and much of it i forgot but i can't, i'll i uh, drug use prostitution uh, near homelessness, near running out of money. And I'm like, what is redeeming about this story or this writing? Nothing, nothing. I couldn't stand the entire book. And it was, it was a tiny book. It was probably about 150 pages. I thought it was just awful. I don't have a problem reading books that have some pretty violent or gory or awful stuff in them, but this wasn't redeeming at all. I, you know, give me that type of a book, but the writing has to be wicked good and it wasn't it was awful awful whoo 2019 this is one of the best years i had for the worst book ever one of the worst books i've ever read was three women by lisa tadeo i did an entire video on this book and i will link it below this book was horrid it was completely different than what the blurb said it was going to be. It was poorly researched, poorly written, stereotypical. It put down women. It made women look like insecure nymphomaniacs. It was awful. And there was so much more that went into these women's lives that was unsaid. But the way that the book was put together was it gave you a glimpse of the sex lives of three women and how toxic and dysfunctional they were. Well, you can't, how do you, how do you write a book called Three Women about women's sex lives and use those experiences as generalities to apply to all women? Because that's what the book was trying to do. And her writing was just God awful. It, she started out this project to research a lot of women about their sex lives. 
And she wanted to, she spent a long time, years doing this research. And at the end of the day, only a few women were willing to take part in a publication. And so that's, she changed her focus. She changed the direction of the book and it became the story of three women. <sighs> none of whom, none of whom had any, any shred of a typical life. And so you can't generalize for women. You can't give advice to women based on these three, three experiences. It was an awful book. It was internally misogynistic. It was insulting. It was degrading. It was insulting to the intelligence of women or anybody who read this book. It was just awful. My, my review will be linked below. <laughs> oh, 2020. Um, Bad Feminist by Roxane Gay. Uh, I really like Roxane Gay as a person. I like what she does. I like what she says and how she says things. I'm not a giant fan of her writing. And this book was probably different than what I was hoping for. There's a lot of pop, pop culture in here, and I am not a pop culture uh, essay fan. And so I just did not enjoy this book. And the, the much of the message of the book was the things that she likes for entertainment make her a bad feminist because she grew up reading Sweet Valley High books and she loved them. And she used to love, you know, teen dramas and those types of things. She liked um, entertainment that showed young girls or women, young women in problematic or questionable situations. And so if she considers herself a feminist, she kind of presented that to the reader as this makes me a bad feminist. I just did not enjoy any of this. I didn't enjoy the writing or the topics that she chose to wrote about, wrote, write about. And she went back and forth between what she thinks about entertainment and pop culture and where her attitudes came from. No, I didn't like it at all. And I didn't think it was that good of a book. I, it, it flipped back and forth as one essay after another, every other one. And I just didn't think it was very well done. It wasn't the worst thing I've ever read, but for that year, it was pretty close. Now, when was that? That was 2020. 2021. Oh, here's another one. Here's another one. Another book that I enjoyed tearing apart. This is 2021. This was Unsheltered by Barbara Kingsolver. Oh, oh goodness gracious. This was one of the most egregious examples of Kingsolver preaching to the reader. She went off on everything. This was published during the Trump years. She went off on everything Trump politics, the it, the health insurance system in the United States, the elderly having trouble getting medications, teenagers playing loud music in cars, her own son who was, uh, who got his girlfriend pregnant before they got married and seemed to be deserting his own baby, the child welfare system, immigration. She went off on everything. And based on this particular character, I was just dumbfounded by this book and I hate read the entire book because I was buddy reading it um, with Heidi and either Noelle or Joe I don't remember I'm sorry about that but I couldn't stand it and uh, <laughs> I'm gonna link my review of that book down below the basic plot of the book is a dual timeline where this woman and her family have to leave their home and move into this dilapidated, falling down house that has uh, centuries of history to it. And it goes back and forth in time. That, that plot could have been very interesting, but it was such an awfully written, awfully paced, bad content book. It was bad, it was bad. Okay, 2022. <laughs> I, uh, this was a, a buddy read with Brian and I DNF'd, did I, no, I didn't DNF it, I read the whole book. And he and I, I think, agreed on both both of the book, Brian from Bookish. And this is basically P.D. James' version of a mystery rewritten from Pride and Prejudice. This is the last book that P.D. James ever wrote. I believe she was 94 years old when she wrote this book. And it was kind of a, a way for her to express her fan, fandom or fan fiction-ish attitudes towards Pride and Prejudice. This was such a, a crappy book. Uh, it made Elizabeth Bennett a background character and she had no agency and no 
no offering to the plot in this in this really stupid mystery. There was no sign, no signal as to who could have done it. You would never have guessed it because she twisted the plot so hard to get to this conclusion. It's like, how would you ever have picked up on that sign? And I kept flipping back and forth like, what did I miss? What did I miss? Why didn't I see this coming? What? Where did she pull this out of? And it was just so badly done. And it was, it was completely off the rails of how the characters were in Pride and Prejudice. It was a murder mystery set in Pemberley, and it was just awful, awful. It was a really stupid, sappy, trite little ending, and just did not work. It was bad. It was bad. Well, I guess that's the whole point of this video, right? It was super bad. Super bad. Okay, we are up to 2023, and I don't mind telling you what, what the worst book so far was for me for 2023. This is Lost and Found, a memoir by Katherine Schultz. I read this for the Nonfiction Booktube Prize in the octofinals, semifinals, one of those. No, octofinals, quarterfinals. And this is a very short little memoir. She's uh, a journalist and a writer for The New Yorker. Um, this book was supposed to be about her thoughts and experiences after losing her father to illness and who she loved. She, her father was beloved to her and she grew up in a charmed, loved, family experience. She had a sister and her parents loved her dearly. Her father was the child of an Auschwitz or, or a death camp survivor and she brought a lot of that uh, those thoughts into the book but this memoir was stupid. <laughs> That's an awful thing to say about a book but I didn't know what, her, what she was trying to do. It, it, she she was talking about feeling lost after the death of her father, but he had been ill for a very long time. And then she was talking about how she met her wife, and she was talking about that experience as if nobody else in the world has ever done or felt that. And it, there was nothing revelatory in her memoir. And that by the end of the book, she was talking about philosophy. Now, granted, this was a tiny, short book. It was everywhere and meant nothing. There was no no general grand meaning to this memoir and it's not that now again memoirs are hard to review because you don't want to cut apart a person's life story and that's not what I'm doing it's how she presented it it's the writing of it she it it, it seemed the writing seemed forced like she was trying to sound very smart and I'm assuming she is but the the way she was writing it was just I don't know flawed, deeply flawed, and I just hated this one. And all of these books I wouldn't have read if not for BookTube. So the only one, the only, the only exception to that may be Unsheltered by Barbara Kingsolver because I was already a fan of hers to begin with. But after that experience, when I did pick up Demon Copperhead, I was so leery of what is this book going to be like? And I didn't love Demon either, but it was better than Unsheltered. Now, what is my honorable mention? This book was interesting because this was a buddy read with Freddie from Sluggish Reader. And let's see, we wanted to read this because th we had heard so much about this um, backlisted book and it was kind of getting into modern classic territory. And this is uh, Birdsong by Sebastian Fox. I have a video on this one as well. It is, all these videos are linked below. And you will notice that I don't have any physical copies of these books because I disposed of them as soon as I possibly could. Birdsong, I literally threw that book in the trash. This was after my buddy read, after I had tabbed the crap out of it, I threw it away. The one redeeming thing about Birdsong is his writing about war is fantastic. The rest of the book sucked. It was a sordid example of a man writing about women with no frigging clue how to write about women. He was writing his character who served in World War I and, and his character's attitu attitudes towards women. It was so backwards and so misogynistic and sexist and chauvinist and all of the bad things you could say about men's attitudes towards women. And if it would apply to the character in the time of World War I, it would be part of the story.
But it didn't feel that way to me. It felt like Fox was inserting some of his own attitudes about women. The terms he used to describe them, the way he wrote their, their feelings and their emotions, their, their attitudes and thoughts towards relationships and marriage, uh, prostitution, it was just, just god awful. And I felt that this, I felt that this character would not have felt that way about the women that were in the, the content of the plot. It, it felt too much like the author working out his problems about women in the novel. And um, it was just so bad. It was so bad. <laughs> the, the war writing was, was just amazing. Uh, the, the quality of the writing, if you took out anything that had to do with women, writing about World War I was fantastic. It would have been it would have been a different book and it would have gotten a different rating from me but it ended up in my garbage can who wants to throw away an actual book i don't but i did i actually enjoyed it with this one so those are the worst books for each of the years because of booktube i blame you booktube <laughs> no it's not like anybody forced me to finish these books so those are my thoughts. If you've read any of them, if you remember seeing my previous review videos, let me know in the comments below what you think, and I will see you in my next Bookish Week video on Sunday. Bye, everybody.